Hello, good evening, and welcome to Reginald ESQ. I'm your host, Underhook, and this is my review of the Tier 3 Russian light tank, the T-70. Now, those of you who saw me review the, the T-60 will know that I didn't give it a very good uh, a wrap. So, is this any better? Um, the T-70, yes it is. It's a good tank, a very good tank, as a matter of fact. Uh, it does very well at Tier 3, holds its own at Tier 4. It does suffer quite a bit at Tier 5, but then, hey, most Tier 3 tanks do. Let's get into the review. The tank has 230 hit points. Uh, weighs f uh, and 230 hit points is average for this tank, this tier. Uh, weighs from uh, 10 to 12 tons, has 170 horsepower, and has a speed limit of 45. Now, the speed, if you've watched my T60 review, you're all saying, ah, is it terrible like the T60 was? The T60 had a fictitious number of 45, but I could only get it to 38 on the flat. With this tank, though, the 45 is right. It does do 45, and it actually accelerates pretty well. This tank, even though 45 is only sort of an average or low, really low to average for a Tier 3 light tank, it actually it actually gets there pretty quick. It's quite a powerful tank, so it, and it feels pretty quick. It, it, it gets around all right. Now, it has a traverse speed of 52, which is excellent. The only tank that has a better traverse speed than that is the BT-7, which is the other Russian Tier 3 light tank. So no problems there at all. Very maneuverable tank, uh, very good. The turret traverse of 40 is around about average, and the view range of 310 is, uh, well, very good, really. It, well, it's the equal second best, if that makes sense. The only one that has better... Um, view range is the Panzer C, which and it has 10 meters more at 320. The signal range of 525 is about average. There's a huge variance in uh, in signal range in these tier 3 tanks, but that's about average. So what can we say about it? Well, what advantages does it have? Well, it has, camouflage wise, it has sort of, uh, not bad camouflage. I wouldn't say it's great, but it's pretty good. It's a little bit better than the BT-7. However, the BT-7 keeps its camouflage while moving, but this T-70 doesn't. When it's moving, its camouflage is reduced. Uh, it's reduced by about 25% whilst moving, so uh, that is a bit of an issue. Uh, however, the um, the thing that saves this tank, in a way, is its armor, and it also has an excellent gun. I might just get into the guns now, so we can have a bit of a look at those. Now, you do have the, the oh, I'll get this up, but you can have a look. You've got the 45 millimeter, which is pretty much uh, useless, really. 45 mm has 51 penetration, but its accuracy of 0.46 is no good at tier three, and it uh, it just doesn't work. I'll get rid of that one, and you don't really need it because you already have the ZIS anyway, because you would have had it on the previous tank. Now, if you remember, I pretty much said the ZIS destroyed the T60 because the T60 had no armor. And with a 2.3 or 2.5 second aiming time, whatever it was, it was too long for that tank. In this tank, it's also 2.3 seconds, but once you upgrade the turret, the aiming time drops to 2.1, and the f rate of fire actually increases to from about 24, I think, to 26. Uh, and look, it works okay. I had a I had a couple of good games with the ZIS. I, I had good games in this tank right off the bat. Um, 0.39 accuracy, 2.1 aiming time, is is in this tank it's all right because it's uh it's got some armor so yeah that gun does okay but you really want to get onto this gun because this gun is awesome it's the 45 millimeter v42 uh, it has a rate of fire of 24 which is very good has penetration of 75 which a tier 3 is really really good you will penetrate pretty much any tier three with that, any tier two or tier three. Tier fours, there's a few you'll have a bit of trouble with, like say Matilda and that sort of thing, but even a Matilda, if you pick the right spot, get close enough right angle, you will penetrate. And if you're having trouble, you've got premium ammunition, which will give you 110 mils of penetration, and that will allow you to get through most tanks, even even a, um, a KV-1 if you, if you hit the right spot. Now, um, the damage it does is 55. Now, it does have HEMO, which is, yeah, no good. I wouldn't even consider it. Um, but yeah, 55 damage is respectable with the rate of fire that you have 
and the fact that you've got good penetration and you've got reasonable armor. 0.37 accuracy is getting better now, but uh, it's not great, but it's okay for a tier three tank. And a 2.3 second aiming time is longer than I like, but in this tank, it, it works, it works okay. All right, so that's it for, for that side of it. Now with, with the, uh, the turret upgrade, it doesn't actually increase your armor at all, but it does increase your traverse speed from 36 to 40 and does increase your view range by 10 meters. So it's definitely a worthwhile upgrade. Uh, and the engine in this tank makes quite a bit of difference. It, it's a bit of a slug when you get the first engine. Uh, and I thought, oh no, we've got an action replay of the uh, T60. But once you put the new engine in, it does go a lot better. And the tracks increase your traverse from 48 to 52, which is very, very good. Okay, so let's get back into it. Now, speaking about the gun, the gun is very good. However, gun depression. If you use the ZIS or the 20K, you have six degrees of gun depression, which is terrible, and 25 degrees of elevation, which is very good. But six degrees of gun depression, no good. So it's not a hill fighter, and uh, it makes it a little bit more difficult to go hull down in the tank. However, if you put the VT-42 in, it's even worse. The VT-42 in, you've only got four degrees of gun depression, which has to be one of the worst gun depressions of all of the tanks in World of Tanks, uh, and it has 19 degrees of elevation, which is uh, uh, still okay. That 19 degrees of elevation is okay, but the gun depression of four degrees is absolutely terrible. So really, uh, very hard to shoot down off hills or anything like that, unless you poke your whole tank tank down. One of the good things though about the tank is it's quite short. So if you you can sort of roll over the top of the hill, and you've got a bit of acceleration, so you can kind of you do have to expose your hull to get the shot but you can get back pretty quickly and because the tank's short you quickly get over the hill you not like have this big lumbering hulk trying to come over the hill and it's exposing the underneath of your tank also the armor is the lower plate is one of the strongest parts of the armor so when you're coming up over the hill you are somewhat protected in this tank and you also have a turret that can take a hit as well which i'll go into in tank inspector so basically this tank you can use it as a uh, sniper if you want to like if you're stationary the camouflage is very good and the gun is very good or you can uh, act as support for the frontline tanks. You don't want to be frontline, but you can act as support. And uh, I'll talk a bit more about that perhaps in Tank Inspector. Um, I have the small repair kit, large repair kit, and large first aid kit on board. And I will be running um, binoculars, camouflage net, and toolkit. My crew ranges anywhere from 71 to uh, 81 percent, 75 to 81 percent in the gameplay. Uh, I'm not going to have a game with the ZIS gun because you've seen that gun a couple of times before on the BT series and on the uh, T60. So I'm just going to show you a couple of games with the, um, what do you call that gun, the V42 in it. Alright, let's have a look at Tank Inspector and see what that has to tell us. Alright, T70 armor in Tank Inspector. Now you may remember when I talked about the T60, if you have watched that review. Um, I mentioned that the sloping of the armor was excellent, as it is here. However... You know, when you slope 10 mils of armor, it doesn't make any difference because it's too thin. Well, on this tank, the T60, the armor is thicker and the sloping does make a difference now. So it's 35 mils of armor, but you can see there on the equivalent, and let's see, it would be about the same height as the gun on the turret there now. Equivalent is around about 42. So 35 mils of armor turns into 42 to 44 mils. So you're actually gaining a fair bit. Now, 40 mils is gonna stop all of those annoying uh, cannon firing tanks, yeah, multi multi fire tanks, or most of them anyway, all those tier two and tier three ones, uh, that in the um, the BT, for example, in the BT seven, you get ripped to pieces. In this tank, you don't. They just bounce off. Now the lower plate is even stronger. The lower plate's forty five mils of armor, and you can see there it actually comes out to the equivalent of fifty eight, which is pretty good. So if you are coming up over a hill, you've got some good protection. The driver gets a little bit of protection as well. He's got 55 mils of armor there, which is a heck of a lot. Now with sloping, it comes out at 72. There's a lot of tier four tanks will bounce off that. That's quite good. So that driver's hatch is, is, is good and it's in a good spot. So a lot of people will aim around about here. People that don't plan much are just aim, you know, fire. They'll aim around the center here and some of the shots will hit that. Now this, the turret itself is 50 mils of armor. The, um, sorry, the Mantlet is 50 mils of armor, which is very, very good. If we go to the edges, we get some overlaying, 
which will be pretty much impenetrable for just about everybody except uh, some big tier fives. Now the front of the actual turret is a 35 mils of armor as well, but you can see there due to the excellent uh, shaping of the turret, it's coming out the equivalent 47. And the same on this cheek here, 49 there. So you can see that with some great shaping and sloping and angling of the turret, it's very effective. And now at the top as well, look at the top bit here. Yes, C5 mils it's coming out as 52. And if we he look here, we see why. I'll turn the colorized view off. Look at the sloping on that. That is excellent. And you will bounce a lot of shots in this tank. Now, the front is very good. However, the side of the hull is very weak at 15. So the side of your tank and the rear of your tank are still very easily penetrated. So you've got to keep the front of your tank to opponent. But I've had situations where little tanks with auto cans have come around a rock and just started shooting me and because you've got fantastic traverse in this tank all i've done is just rotated my tank and kept the front facing them and every single shot just bounced off the front and i was able to just pummel them just keep firing with that with that 55 uh, damage and just annihilate them the side of your turret is actually pretty good at 35. now if they get a shot straight on 35 a lot of tanks will, will get you but those little auto cannons won't if you can get hull down this tank and only have your turret showing, like in behind rubble, which I've managed to do this a couple of times, it's bounce city. Hardly anyone can pen you at tier three. At tier four, not many can. At tier five, different story, of course. You've got to be much more careful. All right, so I hope that's um, given you a bit of a rundown of the armor and the play style of the tank. Uh, yeah, you can, um, you, can, you can go a support front line now. It's pretty good. Let's get into some gameplay. Move out. Okay, the map is Prokhorovka. I am in my T70, tier three. Oh, and I've just been shot by a teammate in the butt. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm heading to the hill. And um, yeah, tier three game. There are a few T10 tanks on each side. Ah, oh, look at that. The LTP player said sorry. Very good. So, uh, yeah, that's good. Not a lot of people say sorry. If I ever do anything like that, I always say sorry and you know, the accidental shot. Um, so that makes it okay. I feel good about it now. Um, yes. Yeah, so, um, and that can all well, that can happen. By the way, if you're having lag, what happens is people lag and their tank won't move and they lose control of the tank. So they just start pressing buttons all over the joint. Then all of a sudden it comes good and they're still clicking their mouse and thinking, why won't it work? And then it suddenly fires a shot. So if your tank is lagging, it won't work. You can press all the keys you want, just don't press the fire button. Anyway, uh, here we are going up the hill. Now you see this, I think in this game, I might not have the top engine yet. It's not, not that quick up the hills anyway. But other than that, it goes okay. So I'm using the um, VT-42, which is the top gun, and as I said in the uh, review, it, it has very poor gun depression, so for only four degrees of gun depression. So we'll need to have our tank pointing down if we want to get shots down off the hill. So I've got a tank with pretty good camouflage, so I'm just going to move right up. At a higher tier, you can't knock over trees like that and give away your position, but at this tier, it's not too bad. Panzer 3A, Enemy penetration. Very good gun, this. Penetration. Great penetration. I think it's, was it 75 mils of pen? Okay, so I start shooting where I think he should be by now, and both those shots didn't hit anything, so he obviously moved a little bit differently to what I thought he was going to. So I've got a cruiser 4 here trying to line up a shot. As you can see, my gun's pointing up high. I actually have to knock down that tree in front just to get my gun to point down at him. So I'll get my tank tilted down. At least I'm far enough away that I don't have to point down too far. But even now, I have to move forward again to get the shot. Yeah, it's a good shot. Now my gun out depression now, I can't hit him again because my gun won't point down far enough. And I think I've taken too many chances already, so I pull back a little bit to get some camouflage. Both those shots miss. Enemy armor is damaged. Enemy armor is hit. And that tank's dead, so somebody else finished it off. So 
So at this stage it's 4-6. We are in front, so we're doing pretty well. There's a Cruiser 4 there on the right, and he's just killed our M3 Stuart. So I've got to do something about that. First I move back and decide I'm going to hide, but then I decide I'm going to have to get closer, and um, I can't afford to just be shooting off the hill. That guy, he's going to... The Cruiser 4 is a pretty dangerous tank, so I need to get in a position where I can actually get uh, get the drop on him. So I decide to move into this bush and hide. I go right into the bush so I can't be spotted from anybody off the hill and get away in position to, before he comes up. I want to want to get him before he can see me. But he actually sees me first, but I get a shot in. And I have bounced a couple of shots off him already. So you can see the excellent armor. Let's have a look, actually. I'll just stop that. We'll get out and we'll have a look here. So we've bounced one there off the frontal plate, looks like, and one off the mantlet there. And the other one, you can see there near the track, uh, the lower plate there, that one actually looks like it went in. Uh, and that's the toughest part of the tank, so he was a bit lucky to get that one in if that's the one that went in. All right, let's continue. So I'm far enough behind the bush that I would have uh, ceased to be spotted by him. He's had, he, I've bounced another one, and we get him with that shot. So let's have a look. Where did that one bounce? On oh, that one has hit the plate in front of the driver there, which is uh, a very tough part of armor as well, so we're quite lucky. All right, there you go. So that uh, is the real difference between, say, this and something like the uh, BT-7. Is it the BT-7? which is a tier 3 Russian light tank as well, is faster, but has no armor at all. This thing has armor that works. At tier 3 it works really well, and even at tier 4, four it works okay. So trying to get shot on tier 46, I have to come right up and, and basically lean my tank over the ledge a little bit to get these shots in. Well, not leaned over, but go onto the downward slope of the hill to get the shot on him. So, so yeah, if this was a tier 5 game, I'd be getting smashed up here because I'm, I'm having to come out too far to get the shots because I haven't got the gun depression. And I'd be getting spotted and getting hit from everywhere. But in a tier 3 game, you can get away with it. Uh, but tier 4 game, this tank still works well. In a tier 5 game, you just have to be, um, you know, try and do sort of some scouting and just harassing, shooting people's tracks. And But, yeah, you know, I, I found I, d I don't live very long in a tier 5 game. I'm not that good at it. All right, so now the scores are 11-10. We have uh, five tanks, the enemy has four. So it doesn't look like there's any more action on the hill, so I decide to move off. Keeping my gun pointing to the right, just in case there's anybody on the hill to the right that uh, somehow wasn't spotted by that T-18 that went through. You never know, sometimes someone's hiding really well and they suddenly start shooting in the back. So I'm going to go over here, but I decide, and I usually do this if it's especially in the late stages of the game, I don't go over there at that crossing point, because if anyone's watching this point, they're going to watch it there. So I like to come over further back, and also artillery sometimes sits just over the tracks from where I am now, and you can come down basically right on top of them, and then just park behind them and shoot them. Um, so as I'm coming over, there's, there's a key knee's been spotted over the side. And that T-18 that went across has been killed, our, our friendly T-18. Uh, terrible accuracy there. The gun didn't seem to want to aim. Still doesn't want to seem to aim. Oh, that's aimed, apparently. Okay. Not having much luck. That was a terrible shot. I didn't lead it at all. He's killed our cruiser four, so it's not looking good. Now, we've got two tanks, and they've got four. Critical hit. Enemy okay. vehicle destroyed. That was uh, fortunate. We needed that to happen. Now it's... Oh, it's just me now. Against three tanks. Oh dear. Ah, uh, dearie me. Okay, so they've still got artillery. Which is why, by the way, I had a couple of shots and I just backed off the hill. I didn't stay up there. Because they've got artillery, I don't know if I've been spotted or not. Because uh, I haven't got six cents at this stage. So I don't want to stand... Yeah, still on the top of a hill. If someone spotted me, artillery will zone in on me. So I had to move. I've come back now. I'm behind a bit of uh, cover. Or a bit of um, camouflage. Bushes. Just seeing if anyone's going to try and sort of shoot out to try and get me. 
So just wait first, because they'll make themselves easy targets if they come out to get me. But they don't appear to be doing that. I don't want to cross that field, because I reckon they probably know someone was shooting from over here. And if I go across that field, they're probably all pointing their guns at me right now. So I decide, nah. We're going to go around, and I figure they've got three tanks. They're probably going to try and cap. Because when you outnumber somebody like this, like this one tank and you've got three, it's not a bad idea. Or what I would do if I could coordinate it, if, if everybody spoke English and I could type in and talk to them all. Unfortunately with the servant, there's not a lot. These days in SCA, SCA server, not everybody speaks English, which is a bit hard if you... I don't speak any Asian, so I can't sort of communicate. But um, if... What you do is, one of you goes in the cap, and the other two stay either side of the cap, a little bit out from the cap, and wait. And then when someone comes to stop the cap, they get spotted, the guy who's in the cap probably gets killed, but the other two tanks on the outside of the cap who are hiding in bushes or whatever just slam into the one who came to stop the cap. And that's pretty much uh, one of the ways you can you win it. Now, we've just spotted a medium tank over here. We get a shot. He penetrates the inside of a tank. But I'm, now what I'm doing now is shooting and moving a little bit just to throw his aim off. Unfortunately, it threw my aim off too, but I'm not standing still. I'm shooting Enemy and moving. And due to our excellent gun, with uh, you know, it does reasonable damage. Uh, great pen. Now they're capping. Now they've only got two tanks left. Sorry, I'm not going to cross at the normal crossing point. I'm going further down. Sometimes artillery sits right down the end here, so if there is artillery, I want to come out behind it. And also, if I'm not crossing the crossing point, they won't have their guns pre-aimed at me. Here we are. Look at that, he's aimed fairly close to the crossing point, but I'm not there, buddy. So I've spotted him before he spotted me, and fortunately for me, he didn't have a lot of health left. That was only 12 points to finish him off. So now, it's just artillery. So I now I start driving through the bushes here, as you can see. And as you can see, I also took a bit of a funny path to get there because I was probably spotted by that uh, key knee then, so I wanted to change my path in case artillery was aiming at me. And now I'm driving down here using these bushes, keeping the bushes between me and potential RD. I've got my gun pre-aimed across in case I happen to spot him as I'm driving through because I figure he's going to come somewhere from that direction because I... I seem to recall them being over there. Now if you actually look on the, my mini-map and you look at A2, you'll see that is the last known location, the last time you were spotted at that location. I think it's a mod or something, um, but I've only just recently worked out how to make the map bigger. I always wanted the bigger map and I never knew how to do it. Um, anyway, so I've only just made the map bigger and so I'm not used to yet using that thing where it tells you that when I'm playing the actual game I didn't know that that was the last known location of the Sexton 2. Uh, watching a replay I can see it so I'm still learning how to use the map properly because I haven't had the map big enough to be able to see it before. Um, in case you're wondering to make the map bigger by default use the plus key and use the minus key to make it smaller so I don't know if that helped anybody else because I mentioned it in Clam Wars the other day and a couple of guys didn't know as well so now here I do something a bit silly. I'm trying. To, I'm debating whether I should cap or not because I've got three minutes left, which is enough time for me to cap. And I'm thinking, oh, should I cap? And maybe if I, I'm thinking if I go in the cap, that'll put pressure on me. He'll have to come and get me. And if he comes to get me, he'll probably have to expose himself. Then what? After I hit to get in the cap, I think, oh, but hang on, there's a lot of bushes. He could just spot me from the bushes and then shoot me. So no, I can't cap, I have to go and find him. So then I drove out of the cap again, but I've basically told him now what direction I'm coming from, because I went through the cap. It was pretty silly of me, but anyway. So it turns out now I'm actually driving right through his last known location, which I didn't know, it, as I say, while I was playing the game, because I could, I didn't know how to read the map, or yeah, use the map properly. I'm still getting better at it. So what I'm doing now is driving down here, using as many bushes as I can to drive through, once I go through one bush, I aim at the next bush, and then I drive through that bush, and then I aim at the next bush and drive through that. And hopefully we'll spot him before he spots us. If we spot him at all. There's only two and a half minutes left in the game. 
And that was silly of me not going over the tree. There he is. I take a shot, and I can see he's almost pointing at me, so I move. He fired, and as you can see, he missed. So important, uh, especially with artillery, don't give them time to aim. Throw their aim off by moving. Okay, so um, good finish. We ha had a really good game there. Um, as you see, we got our first class mastery badge there. And we hit a lot of tanks. Let's have a look at the next screen. And we finished on top for experience and on top for damage, I think. Yep, only just though. The Cruiser 4 on our team did a fair bit of damage as well. And uh, the Cruiser 4 on their team did pretty well too. So good tank, that Cruiser 4. Okay, so next screen. And you can see we fired 30 shots, of which 16 hit. We uh, The accuracy wasn't great. Remember, my crew is not fully trained. They're somewhere between sort of 75 and 83, I think. Um, anyway, of those three, 16 direct hits. Now, but of the 16 direct hits, all 16 of them penetrated. At tier 3, this gun, nothing can stop this gun. Nothing. Uh, damage, 694, which is very good at this tier. Hits received six, penetrations three. So we bounced three shots. So this tank has decent armor. Um, we managed to, and actually one of those shots was our teammate assured us in the back. So yeah, <laughs> uh, enemy vehicle spotted one. We damaged eight and destroyed five, which is fantastic. Uh, got 58 base de defense points as well, which is nice. And um, 14,000. We also got 270 uh, compensation and we used a repair kit um, so with that repair kit used uh, without that re using the repair kit we would have made pretty good profit now as you can see here the raw experience was 612 and that was enough for first class so I'm guessing mastery would probably be about 800 something like that okay let's go the map is Corellia tier 3 game and I'm in my tier 3 T70. And I like to go down this side of the map um, most of the time. Especially if I've got a fairly quick tank. This thing's not super fast, but it's not slow by any means. Good acceleration. Now I haven't got any, uh, this is the last game I've got to show you, I haven't got any tier 4 or 5 games, unfortunately I just didn't have any games that were good enough to be worth showing, and most of my tier 5 games didn't, la I didn't last that long, I mean I did okay for what I was, um, but just not worth showing. So I'm making my way up, in, I'm just trying to see if anyone's trying to get up the hill from their team. Usually I can get them on the way across, but actually, oh, look at that. They've got a Kinney's already up there. Now, we've got a tank up there, so he's taking care of him. And I'll look here. So we've got a Panzer II who's not looking at us. He's trying to shoot our tank on the hill. And he's paying the price for not looking at us. Too late now. So the gun performed very well there. I've got to watch this Kinney now, and I'm taking a, trying to get to a position where the Kinney can't hit me. Oh, it looks like we've got a Panzer II going up there to uh, deal with him as well. This guy looks like he's going to pop out from the rock, so I start pre-aiming there. But he actually comes right around. Put a shot into him. He ricochets off us. I, f I miss with that shot. Now, see how quickly my tank traverses? I'm able to keep the front of my tank to him. He bounces off me. We set him on fire. He got that shot in. And then we get him. So, so even, even a tank like the T-46 there, we, we are able to bounce a shot. And that, c that can be the difference between winning and losing a battle sometimes just the shot that you stop or you know you don't get tracked or whatever so Panzer 38T there he's fired fires again he's missed I was going to keep popping out but I figured look I've got an accurate gun and my, not my whole tank is not exposed so I decided just to stay here and out shoot him and he has to run because he's sitting out in the open he cannot afford to trade shots with me because only part of my tank's showing and I've got good armor. So I just decided, nah, I'm just going to risk it here. Now this time, I've only got my turret showing. Now I've managed to track him. He's going to have a hard time hitting me. His gun is not that accurate and we've bounced one. There you go. 
So at this range, even this this armor on this tank is great against tier threes. There's a T18 over there. Like I said, artillery is going for me. You will bounce some um, tier four shells as well sometimes, but don't count on bouncing anything from tier five. And HE still does good damage. Don't worry. Don't don't get hit by HE. So I couldn't get a shot in there because of the terrible gun depression. So I've got to move somewhere where it's a bit flatter for me, or where my tank is perhaps tilting down. So aim at his upper plate because I know it's weak. He's disappeared. Penetration. He hits me, and fortunately I, my shot hit his upper plate and went in exactly where I wanted it to. But I didn't want to stay in front of him. And our Panzer 38T finishes off that TAT, which was great. Artillery fires a shot, anticipating where I was going to move. And fortunately for us, he got it a little bit wrong. Especially at this tier, artillery is very hard to use. So if you can move evasively and try to be predictable, uh, you should be able to avoid it most of the time. I'm being careful staying close to the rocks here in case there's another tank just nearby. Ah, Marta. Well, it's going to pop out, shoot, and pop back. Oh. Now, I was really, really lucky. My gun depression wouldn't allow me to properly aim at him. And I just managed to dip my gun on the very top of his tank. It didn't look like it then in the replay, but in the actual game, I just managed to highlight the very top of his tank and I just shot and then pulled back straight away because I didn't want to get hit by him because they hit pretty hard. And the shell actually appears to have dropped lower. Like, you know, it's like when you miss and it drops too low or too high. That, like, dropped too low and that actually meant it hit him. I was very lucky with that shot. Now, I haven't got much of this tank to aim at. Only a tiny bit there. I decided to let it aim a little bit better this time. And we hit. We get a hit in. He's the last one alive on their team. As you can see, the gun isn't super accurate. Now, I think we hit then, but someone else got it just before us and got the kill. Well, that's the game. Okay, so... Um, yeah, that's a good looking screen. We had a really good game there. And as you can see, the armor stands up really well at tier 3. And this kind of tank is a kind of tank that um, would suit a player of average or below skill, um, like me, because um, the armor is quite forgiving. You can bounce quite a few shots, so it gives you a better chance at survival. You don't have to be uh, a super skillful player. Like, I think the BT7 you need to be more skillful, whereas this T70 you don't. The only trouble is the T60 is no good. <laughs> but, the t well, yeah, I don't like the T60, but the T70 seems to be a very good tank. Um, so we uh, did well. We topped out the experience there, and um, we topped out the damage by a mile. We did 731 damage, and the next closest on our team was the T82 here on 384. T82 is a very good tank. Uh, or a tank destroyer. So yeah, we did really well. Next screen, and we fired 26 shots, of which 16 hit. So accuracy in both these games has not been great, although some of the shots were a bit rushed because I didn't want to stay in front of the enemy for too long. Uh, also, of course, my, my crew not being fully trained will affect that. Uh, but of the 16 that hit, 16 penetrations. Now I'm pretty sure the last game I showed you was also 16 hits and 16 penetrations. I think it's an exact carbon copy. Uh, but if it hits, it penetrates. Damage, 731, which is really good in the Tier 3 game. Hits received 5, and only 2 of those shots penetrated. So the armor is really good. Uh, enemy vehicle spotted 2, we damaged 6 and destroyed 4, which is a really good job. And... As you can see there, we you don't ammunition doesn't cost much, and it's a very profitable tank. Now we did 711 experience, and that was uh, still uh, class one. So I reckon it's yeah, about 800 should be mastery. I probably won't keep playing this tank long enough to get mastery, but it is a great, a good tank, very enjoyable tank to drive. Thank you for watching my review of the T70. I do hope you liked it, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe to Reginald ESQ. And I'm sure if you're driving this tank, you are going to have fun.